Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love and your kindness. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day today. from the great pain and peril of childbirth. Grant, we beseech thee, most merciful Father, that she, through thy help, may both faithfully live and walk according to thy will, in this life present, and also may be partaker of everlasting glory in the life to come, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. Every other person should go down, maybe you kneel or you sit while we pray. Lord, we thank you for this moment. Your daughter, Christiana Angideka, has come before you. As a purification, of someone who has undergone the process of childbearing. We pray you continue to sanctify her in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your Holy Spirit be indwell in her life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we pray for more strength. Amen. Wherever the strength has gone out, Father, we pray you, re you will replenish hundredfold in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And everything that she needs, in order to take care of this child, Lord, may you give to her in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We pray that in everything, let your light continue to shine in this family. May the Lord bless and keep you. Amen. May the Lord lift up the countenance of his face to shine upon you. May the mercy of the Lord go before you and after you. Amen. And may the strength of God in you be renewed. Amen. So that you will live all your life according to God's commandment. Amen. And may the Lord continue to assist you in all your endeavors, Amen. both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Also with you.
Hallelujah. Yes. I said unto them, Suffer the little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For of such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he should not enter therein. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands upon them, and blessed them. Sponsors. Yeah. I'm here. Sacrament of baptism and to be made member of Christ and his church. To be baptized and become a member of Christ and his church. You must declare your absolute allegiance to Christ and your total rejection of devil and all that is evil. Will you now declare this in presence of God and members of this church? I renounce the devil and all his works. Do you repent? You should be done. They want the video. Come on, do this. Do you repent? I do repent. You renounce Satan and all the spiritual forces of wickedness that rebel against God. I do renounce them. And I ask you on behalf of this child, do you turn to Jesus Christ? I do turn to Christ. Do you accept him as your Savior and Lord? I do accept him. Do you put your whole trust in his grace and love? I do put my trust in his grace and love. Do you promise to follow and obey him as your Lord throughout your life? I do promise. Will you affirm your faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I do believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, and that he was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, and that he suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, buried, dead, and buried, that he went down into hell, and also did rise again the third day, that he ascended into heaven, and seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty, and from thence shall come again at the end of the world, to judge the weak and the dead, and thus now believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the remission of sins, the resurrection of the flesh and the everlasting life after death. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Oh merciful God, grant that the old Adam in this child may be so buried that a new man may be raised up in him. Amen? Amen. Grant that all carnal affections may die in him, and that all things belonging to the Spirit may live and grow in him. Amen? Amen. Amen. Grant that he may have power and strength to have victory and to triumph against the devil, the world, and the flesh. Amen? Amen. Amen. Grant that whosoever is here dedicated to thee by our office and ministry may also be endured with heavenly virtues and everlasting rewarded through thy mercy. O oh, blessed Lord God, who does live and govern all things, world without end. Amen. Let the people of God say, Big Amen. 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 Almighty, ever-living God, whose most dearly beloved Son, Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of our sins, did shed a 
out of his most precious side got water and blood and gave commandment to his disciples that they should go teach all nations and baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Regard, we beseech thee, the supplication of thy congregation. Sanctify this water. To the mystical washing away of sin, and grant that this child, now to be baptized therein, may receive the fullness of thy grace, Amen. and ever remain in the number of thy faithful and elect children. Amen. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Excel Onye Dikachi. Excel Onye Dikachi. I baptize you in the name of the Father. Amen. And of the Son. Amen. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We receive this child into the congregation of Christ's flock. I do sign him with the sign of the cross. In talking that hereafter he shall not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified Amen. and manfully to fight under his banner against sin, Amen. the world, and the devil, that this child may lead the rest of his life and to continue Christ's faithful soldier and servant unto his life's end. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Sin now, dearly beloved brethren, that this child is regenerate and grafted into the body of Christ's church. Let us give thanks unto Almighty God for these benefits. And with one accord, make our prayers unto him that this child may lead the rest of his life according to this beginning. Let us all join in saying the Lord's Prayer on page 8. Let us say it together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thou will be done on earth, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass our trespasses. And give us our temptation, for the Lord has forgiven us. Amen. We yield the hearty thanks, most merciful Father, that it had pleased thee to regenerate this infant with the Holy Spirit, to receive him for thy own child by adoption, and to incorporate him into thy holy church. And humbly we beseech thee to grant that this child, being dead unto sin, and living unto righteousness, and being buried with Christ in his death, may crucify the old man and utterly abolish the whole body of sin. And that as this child is made partaker of the death of thy son, he may also be partaker of his resurrection. Amen. So that finally, with the residue of the Holy Church, this child may be an inheritor of thy everlasting kingdom, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our Lord is good. All, All the time. time. Uh, the only instruction I will have to give to the sponsors, otherwise known as the godparents, 
and the parents is that you have to take care that this child be brought to the bishop to be confirmed by him. And before that, something has to take place. As a matter of fact, what we did this morning is ontologically effective. I mean, it is already registered in heaven. Amen. I said it is registered in heaven. Amen. And whatever conundrum or whatever mystery is associated with baptism is imbued in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we just have to accept it. I know most people do not want to baptize infants. But if Jesus Christ should, in his vulnerability, come down in the form of a man, and was subject to man's protection, being an infant in the hands of man, just like a cell, is just a very fragile, insecure, apart from the power that is given to man to protect him. Jesus was like a cell in the hands of man. And he needed only the preservation or the protection or the security of man in his vulnerability, because he became a man. God became what? Amen. And man's nature is to be vulnerable. Because when people say they have already made it to heaven, I'm telling you, you have not made it to heaven. Because you are still what? Vulnerable. You are mm -hmm. still you broken. You are still broken. We are asking the grace of God to make us perfect. Amen? Amen. Amen. And so man protected Jesus. Man could have as well, you know, left Jesus to fall down. And if he fell down, he would broke one of or leg, one of his hands or legs. But man preserved Jesus, isn't it? Yeah. He took upon himself human nature. And so if he could go that route, there is nothing wrong in bringing a child to be baptized in the presence of God. And to give her or him the power to continue his heavenly race. Amen? Amen. Amen? And so that is why I sanction infant baptism. It is more effective. It is excellent. It is perfect. And so let us also remember that Jesus Christ said, allow the children to do what? Don't stop them from coming unto me. Because theirs is what? The kingdom of heaven. As a matter of fact, if we can only humble ourselves like yourself, if we can eschew all this holy body of life and accept Lord, accept Christ in humility as a child, we will be there. Amen? Amen. Amen. So that is why. And you remember in the early church, every family was baptized, as, especially when you believe. As long as you believe. To proclaim Christ as the Lord and what? Yes. The family of Cornelius were baptized. They were baptized. All the members were baptized. And that jailer, who was responsible for Jesus, sorry, for Peter and Paul, that jailer, <coughs> when it was time, that jailer and the family were what? Baptized. baptized. And so you cannot, even if it is not explicitly stated in the scripture, you cannot rule out the efficacy of infant baptism. And so that is the reason why I sanction it that children should be what? Baptized. You are also entitled to your own opinion. But what we have done here today is both ontological and as well perfect, effective in the presence of God. And so may the Lord bless Excel. And may the Lord continue to carry her in his good hands so that she will continue to walk along what has been done in her life today, even unto, unto the end of her life. In Jesus' name. Amen. That is the instruction. Please be careful to handle this child because she is fragile. Fragile in the sense that you have to help her to grow in the Lord. The way you lead her, that is the way she will go. And I know you people are capable of doing it. 
you are strong in, the, in Christ, and so we want her to be strong in Christ. And so when it is time, it is your work to bring her before the bishop for confirmation. Not your work, but you have to do it because it's your child. So, but the godparents, you have a lot of it to do. You have to supervise this child so that she comes to church. And whenever you don't see her in the church, fight, fight the parents. <laughs> Anytime you don't see this child in the church, studying the scripture, go and look for Apostle Peter, whether you're apostle or disciple, go and look for him. Ask him why a cell is not in the church today. It is your, it is your work, and I have done it. As a prophet, I've said it in the presence of everybody. Amen? Amen. And so may the Lord bless him. May the Lord bless all of us. Amen. May the Lord continue to lead his church so that in everything we do, we will see the power of God effective in our lives through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. which you have asked of him. And she said, Let your men serve and find favor in your sight. So the woman went, went her way and ate, and her face was no longer sad. Then they rose early in the morning and worshipped before the Lord, and returned and came to their house at Rama. And the Canaan knew him his wife. And the, and the Lord remembered her. So it came to pass in the process of time that Hannah conceived and bore a son and called his name Samuel, saying, Because I've asked for him from the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. The second reading is taken from Luke chapter 13, point to 9. Some people who were there at that time gave him an account of how the blood of the of the same Galilean have been mixed by the family and their offering. And he <coughs> an answer said to them, Are you of these options that this Galilean were worse than all other other Galilean? Because of these things. We are going to them. I said unto you, it is not so. But you are the most I God. You are the most I
different dials is represented by Kanano Lua Tui for letting me come here today. The Anglican Church is a church of order. Uh, yesterday, I think it was about 6.30, and uh, my wife and uh, another member of this church, right? Yes, sir. Amen. <laughs> so we thank God for that. Uh, the baptism of Excel brought some of us here today. And I don't want to go into the theology of baptism. Let the theologians deal with that. Uh, when our daddy was speaking, it confused me too. The ontology, takalogy, pathology. To God be the glory, whatever that means. For all I know, for all I know, what holds all of us together is salvation in Christ. Uh, those that argue against infant baptism, so be it. Those that say it's only believers' baptism unless you are an adult and confess and believe, so be it. Let's not spend our time with all those ones. What counts is our personal encounter with Jesus Christ. Amen. The thief on the cross, remember him? Christ did not ask him if he was baptized as an infant or as a child or as an adult. He had a personal encounter with Christ. That's all that we need. If it's all about believing and being baptized, I'm sure we know the story of uh, uh, Simon the Sorcerer in Acts 8. The Bible recorded that he believed and was baptized. He believed and was baptized. But it wasn't quite two minutes after he was baptized, he was told that he's wicked, that he needs to repent because his heart is not right with God. So what counts is our personal encounter with Jesus Christ. Period. So let's leave those ones to the theologians. For all we know, our little child, Excel, has been brought into the family of Christ. Amen. All the prayers that were said on behalf of that child today will find fulfillment in her life in the name of Jesus. Amen. I thank God, uh, the IUSA family, for those that you chose to be the godparents of this child. I also feel sorry for you. Because if you have Chuka involved there, you must be on your toes. Uh, may God help us to know and do the right things. So I was told I have 15 minutes. I think I've already spent seven and a half. So we're going to get this done. Um, our text is taken from where we read today. In First Samuel 1, 1 to 20. First Samuel 1, 1 to 20. And I need somebody with a good voice to read this or hear it very quickly so we can all be on the same page as we're going through this. Otherwise, I can go ahead and do that. Ali? Now there was a certain man of Ramathiam for him. Please use the microphone. And, the, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jeroham the son of Elihu, the son of Tobu, the son of Zoph, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other, Penina. Penina had children, but Hannah had no children. Verse 3. This man went up from his city year, yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also the two sons of Eli, Ophni and Phineas, the priests of the Lord, were, were there. And whenever the time came for Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Penina, his wife, and to all her sons, sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. Verse 6. And her rival also provoked her severely to make her miserable, because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was, year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, that she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Verse 8. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, 
Hannah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? And why is your heart gripped? Am I not better to you than ten sons? So Hannah arose after they had finished eating and drinking in Shiloh. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul, and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look on the affliction of your maidservant and remember me, and not forget your maidservant, but will I give your maidservant a male child, then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life. Who was afflicted? Who had problems? Is there anyone here before we continue? Is there anyone here without fault? There are none. So we all have problems and we all have faults. Uh, it, it will make a billion dollars an hour to see a man without a fault. To see a man who doesn't have any issue at all, nothing to worry about. But here we are, all of us. Same thing, there's no difference here. Whether you're wearing what I'm wearing or wearing what the venerable is wearing or so. And all of us here, we well, fall before the Lord, there's no difference. We all have issues. So what we read now, I picked up three characters from what we just read. And I grouped them. I said group A, group B, and group C. And the, the Bible is life. That's what we read now happened thousands of years ago. It is still true today. What we read here now is happening in our church, here, that we are. Of course, we are here to celebrate with our sister and our brother, what God has done in their lives. It is still the same God that answered Hannah, the same God that answered her, and it is the same God that will answer for you and I. Amen. All we need to do is to be on the right channel. So group A, I call the heartless group. The heartless group. And they're in the church. The heartless group is represented by Penana. They are very productive. Hannah didn't have any child. But Penana, her house was filled up with children. She had everything. Yet, why wouldn't you leave a woman who is suffering alone? Because she is heartless. She is productive. Those are the ones that come to the church. They, they, they do everything you want them to do in church. They are the ones that hold the church. They are the ones that get the church moving. They are productive. But then they like the spiritual side of it. They are the ones that are loaded with spirits of discord. All they do is sit down with pen and paper and be, and be writing out all the faults that is happening. Whatever fault, who dressed well, who didn't dress well, who danced and who didn't dance and who looked and who didn't look, that's all they do. Busy body. Seed of discord. That's what they're known for. Their hearts are too far from God. Like Simon, the sorcerer that we just shared. They, they are believers. They are baptized. Just like our baby today. But because their hearts are too far away from God, they don't get it. They think they get it. They think they know more than every person else. But those are the group. Eh? They are the thumbs. They like to people make life miserable for you when you're happy they're not happy when you're miserable they're happy their clock works the opposite direction they're the ones that say thank God she's being punished yes I told her thank God he's being punished for what he did to me 10 years ago yes I told him and yet we are brothers and sisters, and we are sitting in church. I, you, you look at the story that we read today. One common theme there is peace. Peace. Peace is lacking. Where is the peace? 
I wish I can lend them my wife so they can have peace. Peace is the thing that is lacking right there. Between the circle, between the triangle, man, woman, woman, and co-woman, woman and priest, what is, the, what is the peace? In our churches today, where is the peace? Everybody knows about the divisions. Nobody, everybody wants to get the last word. And yet we are in church. We are the body of Christ. We are the believers. We are the baptized. We are the saved. But everybody wants to have the last word in church. Obedience is gone out of the window. Self is in here. I, me, myself, and I. It's got to be my way or the highway. They are the provokers. The group A, the heartless ones. They are the provokers. All they do is provoke, look for trouble. Let's start this, let's get this going. That's the only time they thrive. That's what makes them happy. Any quiet, peaceful environment, they are allergic to. Those are the group A. The group B, I call them the clueless group. And that group is made up of no other than the esteemed Elkanah and the priest Eli. Elkanah, you marry two wives, one supposed to be enough, but you got yourself two. And one is having a problem, but you're not getting it. Sounding like me, hey, why are you crying? You, know, you better knock it out. What is your issue? Why are you crying? Am I not here? Am I not better than ten sons to you? Well, it's supposed to be the other way around. You are better than ten sons to me. Not the woman. The woman is going through shame. In those days, without a child, she's being judged. She's going to the market to buy something. They're looking at her. They're taunting her. They're making life miserable for her. Those are the group B, the clueless. You're not worried about why your wife is crying. All you're doing is giving her a double portion. You want to overload her kidney with protein. Double portion. But that's not what she needed. She needed something more than double portion. She needed something more than the favor of man. She needed the grace of God. So what this man would have done was to go to God in prayers and say, God, why did you seal my wife's womb? Let's see what we can do here. You know, yeah, take double portion. You're fine. I'm here. No, you're not. Those are the clueless. I wanted to title this message, Keep the Favor of Man and Give Me the Grace of God. Amen. Keep the Favor of Man. Have you ever seen how long or how quick it takes to forget somebody when they die? How, it, you'd be amazed. Darling, darling, honey, honey, once you're dead, you're dead, they're fighting over property. They're fighting over money. They're fighting over houses and car keys and, che and, and checkbooks. So if that is true, why are we spending time trying to impress people? Does it worry? Eli, what about him? He is the priest. He is those ones that are quick to judge. You are the priest. And somebody is praying in your church. And you quickly did the judgment and said, this woman is drunk. What, what have you been drinking? You better knock it off. The quick to judge. They are the signposts. You know what signposts do? I, 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 I know if we read the whole of, uh, of uh, uh, First Samuel, what we just read. What God did to this man's household. Yet he is the priest. He accepts people. But he was so clueless. So he was a signpost. Signpost, it's here, pointing people to heaven, but it's not moving. This is the direction to heaven, but I can't move because I'm fixed. 
I say like the signposts. They are in position of authority, and yet they are so weak. They are in church. They are among us. Positions of authority, but as weak as anything. We know about what his children were doing. He heard about it. He knew about it, but couldn't do anything. And yet he is the priest. And yet he was fine to tell a woman who had an issue that you're drunk. I wish he had seen his children getting drunk with the wine. And then we have the group C. I call those group C those that Christ has separated as vessels of honor and channels of peace in our church. And who are those? Let's go to quickly to Zechariah 13, 8 to 9. They are the one thought that Christ has separated to be purified. Zacharias 13, uh, read that quickly to us. He said, In the whole land, declares the Lord, two thoughts will be struck down and perish, yet one thought will be left in it. This one thought I will put into the fire, and we all refine them like silver, and test them like gold. They will call on my name, and I will answer them. I will say, they are my people, and they will say, the Lord is our God. Amen. Isn't this the case with the Isaiah family today? Tried and tested, went through all that you can think of. I wish Njideka can come here and tell us what she went through. But that's the story of another day. The group C, the vessels of honor, the instruments of peace, those that have been excluded to be tried and tested. When you are being asked to sacrifice all that you have, how do you react? How do I react? When you're being asked to sacrifice all you have, and this woman made a sacrifice, and said, all that I have, the only one son, Lord, I will give that back to you. Take the hope. And until our mindset gets keyed to that, to know that it's not about us, that it's about God. Amen. And we can sit down here and pray and cry for as much as I can, as much as we can, nothing will happen. So why is it that year after year, that's what the Bible said here, year after year, this happened? Why wasn't there a change? Well, God is still working on the group C people. Now, God is intentional. He never makes a mistake. Amen. Period. Amen. Our God is always intentional. Never makes mistakes. So it's, it's for us to know what God is doing in our lives. To key in to the purpose of God and forget about the favor of man. The favor of man is as useless as anything he can think of. They are the covenant keepers. When I was preparing this message, I said, wow, it's a difference between being blessed and getting into a covenant with God. Blessing is for you and I. Covenant is for generations. So we need to move from just being asking for blessings to entering into covenant with God. May the Lord help us. Group C are the covenant keepers. They are the ones that are being challenged to surrender all they have to Christ. And they don't care. They do that. Because to them, they understand what it means to serve God. They understand what it means to trust God. They understand what it means that this life is nothing. Amen. They understand what the Word of God says in Isaiah 4.40. Verse 8. It says, we, What are we? Grass 
You're here today green, tomorrow you're withered and die. That's all we are. And until we understand that, the idea of a whole me, do you know who I am, over my dead body? Uh, learned a long time ago not to use that word over my dead body. Because that thing you're saying over your dead body will happen over your dead body. And people will be eating right there <laughs> over that dead body. Man, what are you? Vapor? May the Lord help us. Amen. There are those that God is using to teach us about spiritual growth. What it means to grow in Christ. When you're growing, your growing will be challenged. People will make fun of you. Just like this poor woman, a priest was making fun of her. <laughs> are you drunk this early? Will you please stop drinking in the church? They'll make fun of you. Uh, uh, since, since my ordination, I've noticed two class of human beings. One are those that are already in the faith and are so happy to see me. Every time they see me, welcome brother. And it's so easy to identify them. They are the group B, also the group B, who when they see me coming here, they go in the other direction. I used to sit down with them and we have chats for an hour. Now we can hold a second discussion. What changed? I'm still the same man. You're still the same man. Or the same. Why can't we sit down and talk? But we can't anymore because something has happened. They are the ones that God is using to teach us to persevere. Perseverance. Whatever you're going through, know that the hand of God is in it. Try to figure out, Lord, what is it that I'm not getting in this situation? Can you teach me what I have to gain, what I need to learn from this? Lord, what is in this for me? Not just why me, why me? Who would that be? Who is that going to be? So may the Lord help us. Amen. There are also the action takers. I read about the Phineas, uh, the, the, the son, one of the sons of Eli. And I remember another place in the Bible where we had another Phineas. Both of them priests. One is a vessel of honor. One is a disgrace. Where do we belong? Action takers, not bench warmers. Action takers, righteous action, not deadly <laughs> actions. Righteous actions. When the Israelites sinned and God sent a plague to them by the valley of uh, Moab, the Bible read that 24,000 men and women died. At that time, Moses was busy with his group at the entrance of the temple, praying and crying and seeking God's face. Lord, why are people dying? And here walks in majestically Mr. Zimri with his girlfriend. Walked past all of them and went into his tent. The same sexual immorality that killed 24,000 people. This man is, is, is taunting, is taunting everybody. Right? If you guys are crying, right? Two lessons to learn from that. The wickedness of man, the selfishness of man, the works of the flesh, what he can do. Remember the story of Balak and Balaam? All the, all the enchantments that Balaam couldn't do, the sin of Israel did to them. He knew that the blessings of God for the Israelites is conditional on the obedience of the word of God. So he got them to disobey. And 24,000 died in that process. And what did Phineas do? The righteous action man. He took a spear and killed both of them. And right there the Bible recorded the plague ended. But already 24,000 paid the price for that sin. But yet it ended. 
And Moses was praying. So it's good to pray. It's good to cry. It's good to weep. But as it has to be followed with action. A righteous action. So the group C. Those are the action takers. Our victory over our barrenness. Our victory over our failures. Our victory over disappointments. Needs more than just weeping and sorrowing and crying. Zechariah 7 5 says, The Israelites, the fifth month and seventh month, they fasted and prayed for 70 years. Not seven days, for 70 years they fasted and prayed because the temple was destroyed. And at that seventieth year, somebody said, "Do we need to complete? Do we need to start uh, finish doing this?" Now the temple is completed, so they sent a message to the priest and said, "Hey, are we still going to be doing this?" So the Lord said, "What? Go back to them and ask them. These seventy years, have you been fasting for me?" So for seventy years, they thought they were doing the right thing. For good 70 years, the Israelites thought this fasting that we're doing in the fifth month and seventh month, that we're doing the right thing for God. But God said, I didn't even know you were doing that. So in periods like this, uh, seasons of, of, of Easter and Lent like this, of course we know some traditions do all the duties, uh, fasting, praying, confession, Easter duty, and all of that. Unless you're doing that for Christ, you're doing it for yourself. Unless you're doing it with a right mind, unless your heart is right with God, you're fasting is starvation. You're, you're just starving. I am just starving. Unless my heart is right with God. So the righteous action takers. I pray that God will raise a Phineas in our lives. Amen. In our churches. Amen. We'll get up and take the right action. We just said, Christ is our peace. And I was like, wow. Do we really have to be saying this? Do we mean it? Should it be Christ supposed to be our peace? Not Christ is our peace. Jeremiah 6, it says, why? Why year after year? Why is my people going through all this? It says, because they have made their wound to look as if it is not serious. Say, peace, peace. They cry when there is no peace. Peace, peace. They cry when there is no peace. So, we need to reconcile. We need to learn to be at peace with ourselves and with our fellow men. Amen. The righteous action the group. That's all that we need. And until we learn how to change our mind, how to be mature enough to handle the blessings of God, it will still be the same old story. God is not preparing blessings for us. Our blessings are already there. He is preparing us for our blessings. And until we are ready for those blessings, the womb will still be closed. Until we are ready, until we are mature, until we know why do we really need this blessing? I remember a friend of mine in Nigeria does this when they were uh, uh, issue of a V boot. He said, "I'm going to buy. I'm going to buy a V boot. Then I'll go to this man and tell him that I've landed." So he's asking for that blessing because he wants to go and show off to another man. And poor guy died not even having a bicycle. The wrong intentions. So, in conclusion, as we celebrate with the Yosia family, as we celebrate with God what God has done in their lives, as we celebrate the smile at this woman's face, perhaps. There's still a womb sitting here that is still closed. 
perhaps there's a heart here that is not right with God. Perhaps there is a soul here who is worshipping the unknown God. Perhaps there is somebody sitting here who thinks the world belongs to them. So the world is in your pocket. I can't live with peace with my neighbor. Perhaps there is anybody here who still thinks that living in disobedience is the way to go. The Lord is saying today, wake up. Perhaps there is spiritual blindness in our midst. There is spiritual barrenness in our midst. That's what God is saying today. Let us listen to the voice of God. Today is the acceptable day. Amen. If not tomorrow, tomorrow may be too late. First John 5, 14 says, This is the confidence that we have in approaching God. Knowing that whatever we ask in faith, according to his will, he hears us. Amen. Revelation 21, 6, it says, it is done. Consider it done. I am the Alpha. And I am the Omega. To the one who thirsts, I will give water free. Free. You don't have to pay for it. From the fountain of the water of life. What is holding us? The only thing that is keeping us together is salvation. The only thing that we need to take away from this life is salvation in no other but Christ. Period. Your money, your degrees, your houses, your cars, your beauty, nonsense. I am a living witness. Those are nonsense. Amen. Absolute nonsense. They don't mean anything. Amen. Have you ever been part of packing things for a dead man? Have you ever been through that group? You will learn. Because when you bring the jacket, you remember the last time he wore it. When you bring the shoe, you remember the last time he polished it. When you, when you bring the tie out, you remember the last time he wore it and it was so fitting. But where is it? Being fed. It's busy feeding the termites. Bro, Yemi, I want to thank you for coming in today. I'm not sure uh, why I need to make this special appeal to you in this church. Uh, uh, 16 years ago, almost. <laughs>
Lord is good. The best dancer for this round is. I don't know who will be the best, the best dancer next time. Maybe, maybe Apostle. Apostle.
many years expectation. Yes. Okay. You know, some of you have um, known me as uh, somebody who cannot dance. <laughs> and somebody who never dies in the house of God, right? <laughs> well, I was waiting for a special day. Yeah. And that day is today. Yeah. I used to have um, maybe um, a steady maybe um, expectation or proclamation. Mm -hmm. Or confession, mm -hmm. however you put it. Mm -hmm. Many times I have said, ah, my wife will tell me, ah, let us go to this place. And I will say, man, what am I going to do? Mm -hmm. You know, so, what? I have always prayed, like uh, they were reading here, like Hannah has been filing her petition before God. Mm -hmm. I was asking myself, which day is you know, to be my own day. Yes. Yes. So I was seriously troubled and I was agitated. Mm -hmm. But today, like uh, our venerable just be glad to be, the consolation came. Yes. Amen. So Amen. I am so much <coughs> overjoyed. Mm. I don't know how to express my thanks mm. for the message. Mm. Uh, look at my wife. I would say she is the hardiest pregnant woman maybe I may have known in a very long time. I didn't know, and she didn't know it would be easy for her. So, because I uh, know so, so many times when I was saying, ah, uh, when you, uh, I will be cutting you in the, uh, maybe I'll be laughing you, or I'll be hugging you in the back or what. But she was strong. God was so faithful. Yes. Every time she went to the hospital, it was natural routine. Yes. I mean, and there was never an occasion that maybe I woke up in the night calling people, what am I going to do? How am I going to do? And you know, the uh, better part of this pregnancy was in Nigeria. So, I mean, God was with her. And today, in fact, um, I have celebrated a baby. Mm. Praise the Lord! Hallelujah.
I keep waiting. God says I will do it. Amen. God says I will do it. Amen. I remember all the prayers, even in redeem. All the prophecies. I remember when there's a one of God that came one. He was prophesying and saying, You will carry your baby. Amen. That day was a glory. Amen. And I said that year passed nothing. I say, God, what is going on? But God says, in my own time, I make all things beautiful. In my time, I make all things beautiful. I used to call this a cell. You are the one that make me a mother. You are my bottle of joy. In that right time, God made all things beautiful. God made all things beautiful. And I am prophesying today that every woman that has been in my condition that has been waiting, I've been waiting. As the Lord has remembered me, let heaven open. Let heaven open and remember social media. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy today because today is the day of a sound. Any woman who has been looking for fruit of the womb, is it a boy? Oh, a girl, Father, release it to me. That this year they will say they came to this child dedication. And the door opened. And God did it. In the name of Jesus. Father, I give you praise. All the glory. All the honor. Adoration. Unto your name. In Jesus' name I pray. stand out in the presence of her parents. Amen. She would bring joy. Amen. Whenever you remember this name and say, you will come to the Lord giving thanks. Amen. She will never bring shame. Amen. The mercy of the Lord into your life. Amen. Because the day of agony has come. Amen. Now this is a time to rejoice. Yes. The Lord bless you, and the Lord uplift you, and the Lord grant you favor, both now and even forevermore. Amen. This is the certificate of baptism. It should be kept very wait, well. Wait, let me take a picture. Yeah. What's after? Whether you give it back to them later, that one is, but I will just do it, because you are still in charge of this daughter. The Lord be with you. Yes. Yes. Um, without uh, wasting any of our time, um, my brother Peter here, he's my beloved brother. And back home in Nigeria, we lived together for some time until both of us came to the United States here. During that period, we fasted and prayed because of this situation. I fasted and fasted and I prayed every day for God to remember them. And I made a vow to God that if he blessed his family, that I will use a goat to thank God. And today, that is why I flew all the way from, the, from Texas because I wanted to, I want to witness it. So, to God be the glory. Praise the Lord!
Oh God, we don't want to live our lives without a fire that burns in.